Hey guys, Jordy here for CineCam.net and welcome to Creative Tuesday. Today we're gonna talk about practical lights, all about the whys, the hows, the whats, etc. So a practical light is essentially a light that is visible in your shot. These are often decorative lights. If you pay good attention to any film or series, these are used everywhere and sometimes even overused. You know, for instance, in a series lock and key, you would always see every small light turned on and these have to be switched on separate, each one of them. I mean, who does that? Who turns on all of their lights every night? I mean, why would you even have so many lights? I mean, don't get me wrong, the shots definitely look nice, but then my filmmaking brain kicks in and thinks, that's just too much. Nobody ever has all of their lights turned on all at the same time, and we definitely don't have so many lights. And I'm sorry that I just ruined that for you. You're gonna think about that now every time you're watching a film. Sorry. Now, sometimes I do find that some scenes have made very clever use of practical lights. For instance, here, where someone finds a secret room, she turns on the switch and all the lights are mounted against the walls and set up to the ceiling. Is that weird? Maybe, but it just doesn't bother me as much anymore. It was a clear choice at the DOP and it works. Now, practical lights don't always have to be decorative lights. It could also be a window in the background, a bright spot of natural light, or a hard reflection of light, anything that could break the shadow in the background. But now, why does it work? Why do we always need to place a light visible in the shot? Well, let's compare these two shots, one of which the light in the background is turned on and the other it isn't. Now, right off the bat, we're getting a different feeling. Seeing warm tungsten lighting indicates that it has to be dark outside, because why else would we turn on such a light? So it helps to tell the time of the day. If you are ever shooting during the day in the living room but it has to be night, then just close the curtains and place some tungsten practical lights in the scene. Guys. Have you ever seen a wireless light bulb? Well, neither have I. This right here is something brand new from Aperture. It's a wireless light bulb. Pretty cool, right? Uh, I can control this through my app even. Uh, so I can make this cool, like very blue. I can change the intensity. I can do everything about it. But it's not released yet, so I can't show it to you. Too late. Now, that's not the only cool thing, guys. As you know, we've been working with the Aperture MCs now for a little while. These are just very small LED lights. These are RGB, so you can just change the colors. There are also a bunch of preset effects within them. Now, today, actually, they have released something brand new together with these small lights, and that is this production kit right here. This is a suitcase which consists out of 12 LED lights, 12 of these MCs. Uh, there's also a four kit out there, and like I said before, you can control all these lights uh, at the same time, like fireworks, and that is really awesome. Now, what's so special about this case is that it charges your LED lights wirelessly, so that means that you don't need any cables anymore. You can just bring this suitcase with you, plug it in, and it will charge all together. There are also a couple of USB ports on the side to charge uh, other things you like, and there's also a very cool compartment right here with some more filters for the lights. You can uh, put in some cables in here or whatever you like. And that's practically it, guys. I think this is one of the coolest lights out there that I've ever seen. Uh, now, these guys are not sponsoring us. They did send us these lights, but they're not paying us to say anything right here. Now, Aperture has been sending over gear for as long as the channel exists and has been really helping us to create a lot of things. So thank you, Aperture, a lot for that. Also, Spiffy Gear has been sending us some gear. Uh, these are very intuitive lights as well. Uh, these are as well RGB lights, so you can change the colors, you can change the brightness. They are magnetic. The same thing goes for the Aperture M MCs as well. They are magnetic too. But these also wrap around your wrists or anything else, which makes them pretty awesome as well. Now, we have a couple more. They are somewhere in the studio. And I want to show you guys something different now with using colored light to create different moods. And we're going to use all of these lights right here. So let's check that out. Now, where these lights really shine, pun intended, is with practical lights. Uh, because they are small and battery powered, I can just tuck them away anywhere I want, for example, behind this plant right here. So instantly we're creating this layer of light in between the wall and the plant, which is separating itself from the background, creating more depth, which we'll talk about more soon. Now, it also creates a whole different atmosphere because this is not tungsten lighting. This is not familiar light. So we're creating now with this green lighting something whole different. This could be like a laboratory or something. 
So let's turn this very dull and flat scene now into something more interesting. And by the way, guys, you can also just do this in your living room. You don't need to have a set like we do. And we're only going to use the Aperture MCs together with the Spiffy Lights to turn this scene into this. So already it looks a ton better. Of course, you can create this to your own flavor with the RGB lights. You can have any color. Also with the presets, you can add some sort of more motion into your lighting scene like the filthy bulbs that we've set. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, we've also used the spiffy gears as some sort of a red signal light in the back. A very big difference from what we had before using nothing but small LED lights. And that's it. <laughs> now, apart from clarifying time or setting a mood, practical lights also create more depth in your shots. And creating depth is what I believe one of the most essential things a filmmaker has to do. And interesting is that you can create depth with almost everything. Whether it's opening your aperture to get a more shallow depth of field, or the way that you frame a shot, the dynamic that you put into the audio, your location, the set design, colors, costume, and of course, lights. You know, in my Skillshare class about lighting for film, I talk about the basic principles of how you can create such depth. And it's actually quite easy, which is why the course is not that long, but you need to have a good explanation of it to understand it. Unfortunately, I didn't seem to have such a great teacher at film school, because even after I graduated, I still didn't understand the light. So after a ton of self-study and experience from shooting hundreds of projects, I decided to make this course. You can check it out by clicking the first link in the description down below, guys. And if you're new to Skillshare, you can get the first two months completely for free. So definitely check it out. Anyways, back to creating depth with practical lights. In short, you want to create layers. Layers of shadows and highlights, different exposures. So if you have a dark, one-toned background, it's considered flat. The audience doesn't feel the space in the back, so by adding one or more practical lights, we break that flat background. And make sure that you're always creating those layers. If you just bounce a light into the background, you're just making it flat again, as there's just one exposure level. Try things like opening a door and having a light in the other room. This is something that Peter the Hooch did a lot, one of my favorite painters. But anyways, showing that there is another room in the back creates enormous depth. You know, although we capture a 3D world whenever we shoot video, it's actually flat. If you're watching that video onto a monitor, you can turn that monitor sideways and you'll see that you're just looking at a flat image. So that is why it is so important for us filmmakers to create depth in our shots so that we can create the illusion that the audience is actually looking at something three-dimensional instead of a flat image. And that is practically it about practical lights. No, that's not true. There's still a lot that we can talk about, but I just wanted to say that pun. It's the essentials of practical lights. That definitely is true. Anyways, a big thanks to Aperture for supporting our channel over the years, for sending over so many great lights. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And the same thing goes for Spiffy Gear. Thank you also so much, guys, for all of the support. I'm gonna leave links to all the lights that we use in the description down below, so you can check it out too. And thank you so much for watching, and as always, Stay creative. You know, I think it's time to go back to the hairdresser. What do you guys think? It's starting to bother me, like my hair is coming back into my eyes. But I also think that I'm starting to look goofy again. What do you think? Just let me know in the comments, guys. I hate the hairdresser. <laughs>